first met Jackie Burroughs when I was 10 years old, working on Road to Avonlea. She was warm, funny, maternal, she laughed a lot, she had a foul mouth, and was one of those rare species of adults that talks to kids as though they're actually human beings. She was the first person I met who fit into a rarefied category of relationships. People who you love because of their faults and not in spite of them. She made everyone on set feel important and lucky to be around her. When the camera wasn't rolling, Jackie was Aunt Hetty's worst nightmare. She made dirty jokes, she consumed more cigarettes and coffee in a day than the strongest man can carry. <laughs> With her infectious energy and sense of humor, she made everyone care about what they were doing as much as she did, and that was a lot. Without a trace of sentimentality, she wears her heart on her sleeve and is not afraid to be more passionate than is comfortable for a lot of people. I feel wildly grateful that I got to spend so much of my childhood in her presence, and she's been a huge influence on me, and I'm more honored than that. You can imagine that you asked me to present this award tonight. So thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I must say I'm appalled at your behavior. But using a knife to cut up your salad, letting your elbows flap as you eat like an emu in full gallop, sopping up gravy with your bread, as though it were a kitchen sponge. No, 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 it simply won't do. Uh, what is required here, I see, is um, some good old-fashioned instruction in the basic rules of etiquette. It's the will on my part to have him represent something significant. How awful. Well, I've had my death in Mexico. An inferior representation of the uh, masterpiece, to be sure, still... Uh, <laughs> Heady indulgence at times, right? I'm a lush, my dear. Boulder dash. Here overlooking. I'm sorry, I'm really. No, I'm sorry. Oh, I should write this down. I I'm a writer, you know. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, years ago, between movies. Boulder dash. I don't care what people think, anyway. You don't, huh? No. Well, why, why don't you care what people think? There's no reason why we should be like all the rest of the people here. Well, this is Lulu. <laughs> Pleasure to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Well, yes, I suppose you might call it eclectic. He kills on command without remorse. Well, he also has a sexual organ. He's capable of reproduction, but that hardly redeems him. Have you ever hit your wife, Mr. Wickle? No. She'd... Well, she doesn't know the power of a man. How am I doing, darling? Perfect. Just right. Now, take one or two puffs. Don't approve a reefer, you know. <laughs> But under the goddamn circumstances. If you want to live here, or in a tree, or underwater, it's all right with me. Everybody's doing their own thing. You know, groovy, that stuff. I killed my children, didn't I? Yes, wasn't a dream. Mr. Wilkes. You have the mentality of a grocery clerk. Love can be a, a very painful experience. I'm here. Here's Polly. I, I think I know.
Thanks, thanks. Um, well, what a mean thing to do for a girl who likes to pretend she's above all this sort of thing, you know. Uh, and it turns out I'm thrilled, so thank you. Uh, um, I, I want to thank the Academy for this great honor. Supposedly it's from my body of work. Uh, a fearful phrase, right? Um, I think after looking at those clips, I think I put a little too much body into my work. But. <laughs> Uh, I also, oh, I, I want to thank uh, Marie St. Pierre for this gorgeous dress. Thank you. And uh, most important, uh, thanks to Sweet Sarah for those mean words, those beautiful words. I, I, I like to think I taught her a thing or two in Avonlea, but in that schoolhouse, but you know, I never did teach her how to smoke, which was a drag. <laughs> but, thank you. I, I first of all w want to say a word or two. T I want to say hello to my family. Okay, I want to say hello to my beautiful family in in Kingston and in Niagara and in Los Angeles. Um, hi to Sonny Sedinsky. Hello to my date Michael Oscars, and to my best friend Anne McKenzie, and to all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, I, I, I more, more, more. Um, okay. <laughs> Like, I was sitting there and I was thinking, I, I was listening, I was enjoying myself, even without a cigarette. And, and I was thinking, like, when it came to be my turn, I was determined that I was just going to, you know, be graceful, say thank you, and get off the stage. But, but now that I'm up here, <laughs> I, I would, um, just let me say this, like, I'm an actor and, um, and generally that's sort of a silly thing to be, you know? <laughs> but uh, when I think of myself as a Canadian actor, then it starts to mean something to me. Because I honestly think we are at a great advantage in this country. Um, clearly we don't need to waste time, you know, trudging along the treadmill of fame and fortune or... <laughs> <laughs> And all the nastiness that that implies, you know, because that's really not what's happening here. Or maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but it seems to me that most of us, um, actors, writers, painters, musicians, singers, dancers, most of us are amazingly untouched by either the lure of big bucks or, or the temptations of stardom. And I think that's an advantage. And we're, we're free as birds to pursue our uh, passions just because we love them for free and for fun and quite a lot of the time for free, actually. <laughs> uh, we're free to, uh, you know, to find our own voices, whatever they might be, and we even have the luxury of uh, making huge mistakes and uh, surviving long enough, don't play that music, and surviving long enough to you know, to do better next time. We develop muscles for attracting, enticing, developing, um, for bullying and, and begging others to play with us. That's the thing we have to do, and I think that's why collectives are such a great thing here, winter tan, for one, and why we are such good collaborators. Uh, we also have to, us artists, have to find the muscle, the um, that necessary chutzpah, to dupe or lure um, um, somebody into sponsoring our indulgences, uh, usually the government, right? But uh, <laughs> I just really think that this is a great, uh, this energy, the, the spine, you know, the, the stamina, the ingenuity, the quirkiness that's um, that makes for a Canadian artist stands us in good stead in the long run and even some brilliance is produced now and then. And I just think in this time and in this difficult time that you can rely on us to to um, speak honestly and um, freely um, and express our hearts and minds in um, full conscience and I'm proud of that. I, I just kind of, it's one quick thing. I, I was in, Va in Vancouver having breakfast in a white spot <laughs> and uh, 
There was this photograph on the wall. It was of a waitress in the 40s with a little white cap and apron and carrying a big tray of food. And underneath it said, um, are you proud of what you serve? If not, don't serve it. And uh, then that's sort of what I'd like to say. I'm, I'm really happy to, to be here. I'm going to go off for a smoke. And I love you all. Thank you. Wendy.